Hi everyone, my name is Mariah and this is my literary analysis of The Story of an Hour by Kate Chopin for English 364. So I would like to start this analysis by talking about what was going on in the 1890s. The 1890s was really a time where people were finally standing up for their rights. People were going on strike and they were creating new parties such as the Populist Party which was to address the difficulties that farmers faced that Republicans and Democrats never addressed, issues that they never cared about. One of the amazing things that happened in the 1890s was the passing of the Sherman Antitrust Act. And I'm sure you guys are familiar with the Sherman Antitrust Act. This was just to control the extreme monopolizing companies that were oppressing their competitions. We also saw some women standing up for their rights when it came to working in um, really sweatshops. These tailors were working 10 hours a day from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., making $4 an hour. They complained of having six months on and six months off of work, so only being employed for half of the year. I think it's amazing that in the 1890s, these women were willing to, I mean, really go without a job for weeks just to strike. I believe the reason why the strike was so successful, though, is because men were also involved. According to an article published by the Brooklyn Daily Eagle on September 1st, 1894, about 500 men had gone out on the first call, and that by the second day there would be at least 1,000 more men on strike in the city of Brownsville. Sorry, the city of Dutchtown. A really important event that happened in 1891 was the passing of the Copyright Act, which finally gave writers international copyright protection for their work. I'm going to go a little bit over the life of Kate Chopin. She was a woman who wrote a hundred short stories and two novels in the 1890s alone. A lot of the stories she wrote back in the day are still very relevant to the issues that women face today. In modern times, we appreciate Chopin's courageous writing and her willingness to speak about subjects that weren't really spoken about at that time, such as female sexuality and societal norms and expectations for women at the time. Although I'm sure many women could relate to her writing, her some of her stories were widely condemned, such as The Awakening, um, The Storm. The things she wrote about in those stories were just things that were not accepted. They weren't things that were okay to talk about back in the day, and I think that's what makes Chopin such a courageous writer. She still wrote the stories anyway. She was someone who had to experience many deaths early on in her life. She married a man named Oscar Chopin, and he sadly passed away in 1882 due to malaria. And she had six kids with him, so she was left to be a widow in her 30s. Per Sayerstead, Norwegian critic, explains why Chopin's writing was so revolutionary for the time. He said that she broke new ground in American literature. She was the first woman writer in her country to accept passion as a legitimate subject for serious, outspoken fiction. She revolted against tradition and authority with a daring which can hardly fathom today, which we can hardly fathom today. With an uncompromising honesty and no trace of sensationalism, she undertook to give the unsparing truth about woman's submerged life. She was something of a pioneer in the immoral treatment of sexuality, of divorce, and of woman's urge for an existential authenticity. She is in many respects a modern writer, particularly in her awareness of the complexities of truth and the complications of freedom. Chopin expressed her feelings about marriage and sexuality during a time where women had few rights and way even fewer respect compared to men. The two main themes I'd like to focus on are Chopin's willingness to go against gender conformity and her willingness to defy social norms. Her writing depicts and illustrates the honest struggles that women endure internally when it comes to motherhood and the expectations of, uh, for marriage. Even now that most women aren't expected to stay at home and be a stay-at-home mothers and wives, I still think that her writing is very relevant and relatable to women in modern day. When Mrs. Mallard learns of her husband's death, she appears to be very distraught and very upset, which shows that she had a somewhat happy marriage. It probably wasn't an awful marriage. 
Then we read that she goes upstairs to her bedroom and she is still sad and she's still weeping. However, Chopin makes a point to mention that Mrs. Mallard is sitting in front of an open window. This shows the change in her mindset and also the new possibilities that will be opening up in her life. As she sits in front of the window, she notices the blue sky and the birds chirping. This shows that she's now realizing that her life can change in a positive way. Chopin writes, there was something coming to her and she was waiting for it fearfully. What was it? She did not know. It was too subtle and elusive to name, but she felt it creeping out of the sky, reaching toward her through the sounds, the scents, the color that filled the air. So she realizes now she's happy. She's, she finally realizes that she can be free. Another symbol in Chopin's writing is the uh, Louise's heart problem. Her heart trouble represents the discontent within her marriage. Chopin writes, there would be no one to live for during those coming years. She would live for herself. There would be no powerful will bending hers in that blind persistence with which men and women believe they have a right to impose a private will upon a fellow creature. When Mrs. Mallard finally realizes that she's free, we read that her the blood was pumping through her veins. It, it seems as almost if she had no heart condition anymore. Her husband was, and her marriage was the cause of her heart trouble. So while the doctors thought that she died of an overjoyous, you know, moment, we, the readers, know that she really died because she would never get to taste that freedom 